Rugby League is back, all stars style, for the first time at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. The crowds are rolling in for an epic double header. Up first, it's the women. The scoreboard stands at one win apiece after the Indigenous team got revenge on their Maori opponents in last year's clash. How good is it to see fans in general, let alone at one of Rugby League's showpiece events? This is the 2021 Harvey Norman Women's All-Stars on Nine's Wide World of Sports, live from far north Queensland. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have your company. I'm Erin Molan and this is Ruan Sims. It is so great to see you, Ru. Thanks, Erin. It's great to be back for the first game of the season. Isn't Excited it amazing? already. It goes so, so quickly, but we are so thrilled <laughs> that it's know, here. We are, we now, are. Now, tell me, this is such a special occasion, not just for players and their families, but for the entire country. It absolutely is. And I think it really represents both cultures absolutely beautifully. And I love these games because you get to see just how much it means to the players and just how much they put into it every single year it is a spectacle and I envisage, envisage that this year will be no different. Well you are never wrong I know that much about you <laughs> <Ooh>. so far <laughs> well oh, most of the time differ. you're not but look there is a star-studded lineup and you would expect no different mm. in fact there's a couple of Roosters teammates who are in opposition tonight mm. tell me about them and why this is such a special opposition matchup. It is it's a little bit of master and apprentice here and through uh, the Māori girls missing some of their players because they couldn't travel from New Zealand Nita Maynard will actually take that position of Crystal Rota, who was, was their captain last year. And Quincy Dodd is her little understudy there at the Roosters. And I think both of them had wonderful seasons for the Roosters. They both have a very similar style of play. They play what's in front of them. And at the line, really close at the line, they are both very, very dangerous. So all middle forward packs will need to be really tight through that middle 20. They need to ensure that they do not let them get out of there because both of them will make them pay heavily as we see them in the dressing sheds just getting ready to come out and do battle. I think this is just going to be a huge, huge matchup. And in wet weather too, up yes. there in Townsville, it's going to make those hookers very, <laughs> very on point. So well, it's going to be a tough one. Speaking of the wet weather, let's now head to Townsville where Alana Ferguson is on the ground with an umbrella, so protecting herself, which is lovely to see. It's great to see you, Alana. Who is going to catch your eye tonight, do you think? So excited to be here. Footy is finally back and I'll just let you know the stadium's already buzzing so I'm very pumped. There's a bit of rain but it hasn't kept anyone away which is exciting. Now Zahara Tamara is the woman that I've got my eyes on for the Mouldy. She's playing halfback. She's really great with the footy in her hands but at the moment she's one of the veterans in our game so I'm really looking forward to seeing her leadership out there on the field today. I really want to see her take control of this game. We've spoken about the weather already. Now the field's drained pretty well so it's a pretty Pretty firm pitch uh, but it's definitely still spitting and it doesn't look like that's going to go anywhere so I think Zahara's kicking game will also play a crucial role so keep an eye out for her how she steals those multi girls around the field and I'm also really looking forward to seeing how and when she'll bring in Betty Welsh from fullback. Oh it's so so exciting so without further ado let's now go to Peter Pasoltis but first Ru, who's your quick tip? I'm tipping that the multi girls will just have a little bit too much for the Indigenous side this year so New Zealand multi for the win by a margin? Oh, well, all of these games have been decided by very low margin, so I'll say, especially in wet weather, by good. four. By four, love your work. OK, Salty, it is over to you. Enjoy. Very good evening to you for the first time this year. Yeah, Erin, good evening to you. Good evening to everyone. The first game of the year on Wild World of Sports, and we can't wait for this one to get underway. Always a great occasion. Two proud cultures being celebrated through the great game of rugby league. All-Stars is a game we look forward to for what happens on the field, but it's also a great game for the youngsters to be inspired. And speaking of youngsters, we have got some terrific young talent on display tonight. There's plenty of familiar names, the likes of Corbin McGregor in the Maori side, Talisha Harden captaining the Indigenous team. But there's a few names that will become household names as their careers progress in the game. This is going to be a terrific occasion. Shame about the weather, but still, from what we've seen already, the playing surface uh, looks as though it's holding up really well. Queensland Country Bank Stadium, the venue for All-Stars for the first time. And the very proud Rugby League territory, which is Townsville and all of North Queensland's getting right behind this, expecting a, a near COVID capacity crowd tonight, somewhere in the vicinity of 23,000. The 
we look forward to that as both teams are about to make their way out onto the ground and then we'll have what is always a highlight of this night's the pre-game festivities traditional war cries from both of the teams i know it's something that a lot of people a lot of those fans are seeing in the stands certainly do look forward to and great to see everyone out in this albeit wet february night for the first game of rugby league on channel nine i don't know about you folks at home but i cannot wait for this season i guess with this game we know that the season is here now last year not a lot of points in the game 10-4 the indigenous side won but all of their point scorers aren't playing tonight such as a shift in personnel for both of the teams heading into this one a lot of teenagers 20 year olds in action tonight the future of the game with some stars as well there's a man getting right into it fantastic to see the celebration of both cultures all throughout the week in Townsville and now Corbin McGregor it is leading out the Maori All-Stars experienced player is Corbin McGregor World Cup winner with the Gillaroos in 2017 and will be a real leader in their team tonight Preston Campbell now on the didgeridoo waiting for the indigenous team to make their way out onto Queensland Country Bank Stadium Preston, the man behind this concept. Out Indigenous man is Preston Campbell. Here is Talisha Harden leading out the Indigenous All Stars. Really excited to see some of these young talent on display. Monique Donovan, Jasmine Peters, a Queensland under 18 representative. Both teams out on the ground now. We are just about ready for the pre-game festivities from both teams. We'll see a haka from the Maori side. And we'll see a traditional war dance from the Indigenous team.
have it. Magnificent display from both cultures. The Maori and the Indigenous teams going through their pre-game rituals. Ruan Sims, looking forward to this. I certainly am, Saltsy. It's a pleasure to be here calling this first game of the year with you. And that was just a powerful display by both teams. You could see the emotion on every player's face out there. You can see how much it means to them. You can see how much they're willing to put into it. And also for the Indigenous side, we saw them put out the TI flag as well as the Indigenous Australian flag, celebrating all of the cultures. This is one of the games of the year. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, and it's something that we all look forward to each year. The concept has changed uh, a bit over the years, the annual All-Stars clash, but this is perfect. A double header to get things underway for the season. Zahara Tamara on screen will have a big say in the outcome today. As will Nita Maynard. For Umeono, the 5'8 for the Indigenous team. Very creative player, Samoan international. And the uh, brother of Fuimaono, uh, the sister, sorry, I should say. Yes. He plays for the Dragons. They will be taking the field with the Indigenous side tonight. Certainly will be. We are underway. The first game on Nine's Wide World of Sports for 2021. Great to have Rugby League back. What you expect with Rona Peters in the game. A tough run to open the proceedings. A wet Queensland Country Bank Stadium. The rain is hammering down at the moment. You definitely see it on the screen already. Expect a bit of a tight tussle through the middle again. Rona Peters going for a second carry in this set of six. Just a little bit one out at the moment. Just testing each other out. If they get a good finish off the back, it'll be a good start for the Māori team. This Cherrington and they're into Indigenous territory at the moment. On the last. Kick downfield. Chapman underneath it takes it well. A staggered chase and almost slipped through there to Chapman, but in the end, the door was closed pretty quickly on the Indigenous fullback. As Talina Simon also gets out of dummy half beautifully, there sneaks a good 10 or 12 metres away from the Māori side when they weren't looking. Jamie Chapman with her hands on the ball in these kinds of conditions will be very, very hard to handle. So the Māori side will need to ensure that they push up in one line, minimise her opportunity as much as possible. Free-flowing player, that's for sure. He's the captain in Harden. Do you want him now, then? No. Premiership winner with the Broncos in NRLW. And the kick will come here from Kelly from inside the 40. Let's say Welsh takes it on her own 20. An elusive player. Dodd does well with Johnston there as well. Well, Caitlin Johnston, Ruan, it seems as if we've been calling her for years now, but she's still only 20. I know she's a very young player, but she is so talented. We've had her at the Roosters system for a little while, and she has just come through beautifully as Zali Faye takes a really tough carry up the middle as well. We're seeing some very willing contact from both sides, especially in the wet conditions. It's actually so far pretty good. Here's Mato. That's a strong run as well. Johnson with the tackle eventually in a quick play the ball as well. And Maynard with a bit of room to move here. Gets a pass away to Mara. Short ball away. And that's Tamarua. Good play here. Good start from the Moldy team. Kick into the in goal area. Hits the upright air swing try. Coming through is Racine McGregor to open the scoring. Belinda Sharp points to the spot, first blood to Moldy team. Oh, well, I spoke about this pregame, just what Nita Maynard is capable of out of dummy half. She recognised, her rough recognition is fantastic. In the Harvey Norman replay, we will see here, she jumps out, she notices that the uh, marker is just backpedalling, and that ball there from Zahara Tamara was beautiful. A great line by Tamarua. And then again here, this kick, deliberate kick, aiming for the post, just ricochets off towards the inside and a great chase by her halves partner, McGregor. Unfortunately here, Chapman just got a little bit, oh, nutmegged is the only way to describe it. She just got turned inside out there, went for the kick instead of diving on it. And unfortunately for the Indigenous side, that's four points to the Māori team. What a great start by them. And Rue, we saw in the replay there a moment ago, that run in the lead up to it from Shannon Mato, who got that quick play the ball and they were able to get momentum off the back of it. Well, Shannon Marto, I think her year for the Warriors was fantastic. 
this season, last season. I thought she was one of their absolute standouts. And what she's bringing today is fantastic. As well, her and Ronna Peters as a pairing, that is a dangerous combination through the middle. Both in attack and defence. So here is Zahara Tamara to add the extras. She, she set up the try. Now looking to make it a six-point lead. Second time we've seen her in this contest. So six points to nil. Has Zahara Tamara found her place now, do you think, in the halves? Well, she's always been a half. She's always played in the halves. I think she's just found her voice a little bit more. People always thought she's very, very quiet off the field, but I've played with her on the field and I know just how vocal she can be. And I think she's really coming into her own as a half. She's always been that position, but now I think she's really starting to own it. And she's showing us why, what was it, five years ago, six, almost six years ago, she got the start in the jersey at the number seven for a test match. She is just a really talented player. Certainly is. This is danger signs for the Indigenous team. Peters, another strong charge from the experienced front rower. Maynard being sharp early. It's been all the Moldy team in the first four and a half minutes. They lead by six points to nil. Short ball away there from Mato. Tamarura. Tackled there by Johnston. Maynard just had a little bit of a look, but then decided to get the pass away to Shannon Mato. Strong charge again. So hard to handle. Phillips did well. Now McGregor showing it into the line. Good tackle for Mayono. Here's the last. Opportunity here for an attacking kick on the back of points. Now that's charged down. And was there a little knock on there? Play on, says no, then they've called that knock on. There was a slight knock on. It would have been six more tackles for the Maldi team. Well, I think the Indigenous side just breathed a huge sigh of relief then because absolutely it could have been another set of six and they were really threatening. The kick here, Zahara just propped a little bit, was looking to try and put it in the corner, but some good inside pressure there. I think, was it Caitlin Johnston? It was. Yeah, so good inside pressure there. Force that kick offside and now they'll get the ball and be able to try and work themselves out of trouble. They just need to just level the ship, just right the ship a little bit. At the moment, they're just a little bit frantic because they've been doing a lot of defence. But now this is their opportunity to really settle into their task. This is just the Indigenous side's second set of six for the game. Donovan goes for a run. Tall athletic centre is Monique Donovan. Dodd, the number nine, will be very busy for the Indigenous team. We've seen a lot of her, Quincy Dodd. And here's a flop penalty here, and Talisha Harden too, grabbing the back of her neck. A much needed penalty here for the Indigenous team. This will get them into some really good field position, and unfortunately for Talisha, hopefully she's all right, but she did get a bit of contact in an awkward position there. So the penalty warranted and now the indigenous side will be able to get into their own attacking 40 and we'll see what they what they can actually do because their forward pack if they can set a platform quincy dodd will be able to really cause some havoc for the maori team yeah, dodd with kelly and phil mayano in the halves some elusive players there in the playmaking role for the indigenous team Take two from the tap, from the penalty. And away we go again. Stand up, Corbin. Come here, wait, wait. Dotted dummy half. Harden. Good defence. Maynard doing all the work, and then Peters in there as well. Fermiono, little show, goes into the line. Good ball control there in these conditions. Thought it was going to pop out there for a moment. Oh, solid from Peters. Who else? Good tackle on Phillips. It's still a good opportunity here for the Indigenous team. That's more good defence. Jamie Chapman rattled there from Tamarua. It was a great read by Turner down there, nice and low by Turner that at Rugby Sevens International, as we see a turnover here in the contact. Again, the wet just showing 
how important ball security is in these conditions. They turn over in their best attacking rate of the half so far. Four 15-minute quarters for this women's All-Stars game as Corbin McGregor tackled there by Power and Phillips. You see there the Muldy team dominating possession and field position as well as they get a penalty here. It was late in the set as well. I think they'll want their time again with this penalty because Vete Welsh had really pushed to the line, got herself into a great position for a quick play the ball, and Talisha Harden just hung on, hung on a little too long around the legs. Penalty given away, opted not to go for the kick for the sideline, just a midfield tap, but why wouldn't you when you've got a hard-running player like this? I think is it Tamarua pushing that was, that, through? That was Mato. There you go. Yeah. Just, she is a, a weapon. Zappanate. Now here's Maynard going to McGregor. Always dangerous when she's got the ball. So is this girl in Veto Welsh. Tried to get the pass away. Now, was that just touched off an Indigenous player? It was. It is play on. So it'll be six more here. And they'll take some stopping. Already leading six points to nil. McGregor, long ball. Maynard, short to Peters. Dodd with the tackle. Maynard again, looking for an opportunity, scheming, trying to get away, beautiful ball away. Tamaru with a flick pass, out wide they go, try time, they're in again, Amy Turner. Scores the second try for the Moldy team this afternoon. They lead 10 points to nil. What about the ball work in the lead up there? Absolutely beautiful and well-deserved. Amy Turner, the player who came up with the great tackle down the other end of the field, comes up with the four-pointer here for the New Zealand Maori team. And how about the half-volley pickup? By, was it Faye out on that right wing? It was absolutely better here. We're going to see a, a quick replay on Harvey Norman replay here. Yeah. Great pickup in these wet, wet conditions. And we're seeing really expansive movement side to side from both sides. And again, Mita Maynard causing all manner of havoc through the middle there for the New Zealand Māori. And then a wonderful finish by a veteran, Amy Turner, had an extra player outside of her. Alana, how was it on the sideline? Pretty to watch, Rue. I, I love the way that the, the Māori girls are actually starting their sets though. They're putting all the pressure on the Indigenous women by really utilising those outside backs. They're getting them on the back foot and then that's when we see Nita Maynard inject herself into the game. She's so quick in and around the ruck making those decisions and it was really, really good to see Amy Turner be able to get some points in a rugby league match. It's great to see her on the footy field tonight. Certainly is. Uh, Alana and so just saw on the screen an Olympic gold medalist from the Rugby Sevens in 2016 in Rio. Now I got a bit confused there, Rube, when the last pass was thrown. It was from Zahara Tamara. The, the hair was out up until a few <laughs> moments ago. Now she's tied it back in. I did notice that as well, but she's tied it back up for the kick as well. It must be uh, must have got ripped out in the lead up. Good kicker of the football, Zahara Tamara struck that one beautifully. Must be early in the season. I couldn't even put the mock on her. That was a very good strike from out wide. It absolutely was. She looks to be in great touch already. I know the game is only 11 minutes old, but she has been, had her hand in absolutely everything. You know, Alana spoke about her pre-game, just how much control she would have over it, and we are seeing evidence of that in this first 11 minutes. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Four 15-minute quarters. Double header tonight. Two converted tries yep. in the first 11 minutes. And this will be another kickoff return. Third time today for Ronna Peters. Talk about Peters' size and toughness, but she's still very agile as well, very athletic, can get to her feet quickly. Yeah. And Look, the way the game's going at the moment, we're seeing Caitlin Phillips for the Indigenous side. She's a back rower playing as a middle forward. So that's the direction we're seeing it going. But Ronna Peters still has all of the skill set to be able to play in the middle and still have a ball playing capability. As we see the ball, again, moving wide in these conditions. And she can play at lock as well. And she can play at big minutes and get some really good touches in there too. Very big asset for an inside. Here's Hill Moana. 
on the field in jersey number 15. Tamara puts a kick through, Turner out after it. Oh, that's good play at the back. Jamie Chapman read that one with perfection. That oh, was outstanding. That was gutsy because she had some big boppers just raining down on her. As we see the Maori side really get in there and muscle up in defence. They'll want to try and keep the Indigenous side down here. Indigenous team, a great scoot here again by Talina Simon. But they're going to try, they need to get out of this corner. They need to work side to side. Impressed with the work from Tamarua in defence from the Maldi side early. Some very good reads and high work rate. Hard yards here for the Indigenous team. Here's the last and they're still inside their own 30. Need to get to a good kick here. And they do through Kelly. That is a good kick in these conditions. But Tay Welsh up to the 40. Chapman, the fullback, leading the charge there. Fullback on fullback. Parker. Seen her play for the Roosters in the NRLW. Here's Zali Faye, New South Wales under 19 representative. She plays for the Sharks and the Harvey Norman women's as well. And she is, as she pulls a penalty for her side here, this. The Maori side will be very grateful for this. They'll be able to solidify their position in their attacking half. But Zali Fay is a very strong, very aggressive, natural style footballer. She's very athletic too. So expect to see her get in there and do as much rough stuff as she can. Looks like uh, Caitlin Phillips just went around the clock then. Stayed on a little bit too long for the referee's liking. Well, they're in the mood here. Already up by 12 and we'll be looking for more points. Zahara's trying to confuse you again, Saltzy. The hair's out again. <laughs> the hair is out. Having all sorts of issues there. Someone who went bald when I was 20. I don't understand those problems. Tamarura, quick play the ball. Maynard goes to Peters. Here's McGregor, short ball away. And Sherrington wrapped up a few metres away from the line. McGregor. Vete Welsh. Flat-footed there to Hill Moana. But now she winds up. Four of them in there trying to get her down. Two away. Maynard. Now Tamara, Vete, Wells, Turner. It went forward, she couldn't handle it. But it was almost try number three. Oh, it was very, very close on that left edge there. That seems to be a really good combination between Turner and Zahara Tamara as we are going to the break, quarter time break here. But again, Vete Welsh injecting herself beautifully, getting her hands in, on the ball in the line. Well, that is quarter time and the Maori team leading Indigenous 12 points to nil. Ready for the second quarter of the Women's All-Stars. Quarter time couldn't come quick enough for the Indigenous team. Saw assistant coach Dean Witters out on the field with his troops. I just need some possession, Drew. Well, if that last try had gone to hand, that last ball had gone to hand, the, the Māori side would have scored more than a point a minute going into this break. So I think the Indigenous side will definitely have looked forward to that little break. Dean Witters would have got in there and given him the, his little spiel, and uh, they'll come out with a bit more vim and vigour. And the 12 points that the Māori team have scored in the opening quarter is more than what they've scored in the previous two, or well, it's equal, equal to what they've scored in the previous two All-Star games. As we are underway for the second quarter. Let's go sideline, Alana. Yeah, Rue, you were pretty on the money there. Dean Witters, his spiel to the women was just to provide that energy and really try and slow those Maldi girls down, which we can see that their pace and just their ability to get those quick play the balls is really what's working. When they've got three women in the tackle, and already that's a great start from the Indigenous women. The Maldi girls, they just need to complete their sets and really work for that kick. Well, Maynard playing it, 10 short of halfway. Here's Hill Moana, came on after about 10 minutes and has had some very good touches. And unfortunately a mistake there coming in the play the ball. So this is an opportunity that the Indigenous team need. It certainly is, and we were just remarking, we put the mocker on, we were just remarking how good the ball handling had been in such torrid conditions, as we see an error there from a the big running front rower. But this now for the Indigenous side is an excellent opportunity to press some advantage because they do need to try and get on the board 
next. I don't think they can allow the Māori team to score next because it'll just, it may just be a hill too far, hill too high. Will Moana play for Canterbury, the Bulldogs, and has played for the Kiwi Ferns. Finally, some field position here for the Indigenous team. Got it, dummy half. Johnston, Harden, Kelly. And that's good defence there on Saley Bent. He's seen a lot of the football. That was a good tackle. It's all backwards there. Will he play on? No, it did go forward. More stinging defence from the Maori side. Joseph with the error for the Indigenous team just when they were starting to build Rue. Yeah, I think they would have wanted to take, well, I know that they would have wanted to take that tackle. In these conditions, you don't need to be pushing those passes out the back, especially because Kelly wasn't looking. She thought the tackle was going to be completed, get a play the ball and play off the back of it. So now, from being in attack and having some good defensive structure leading up to it, they now have to defend again and try and get a turnover closer to their half. That rain is certainly getting heavier. Testing conditions. Tamarua is getting up holding the back of her head. McGregor with an inside pass. It's Gray with the ball. Nine short of halfway here for the Maori side. Kennedy Sherrington. Gray. Tamara. Now Vete Welsh. Just always anticipate something when the Harry fullback has the ball, especially with a bit of open space. It's Hill Moana. Now McGregor puts up a kick. They're coming out after it. It'll be still play on here. Sherrington has it. But change over is the last. Well, some great kick pressure there by the Māori side, the kick chase, I should say. And unfortunately, it just didn't go the way they wanted it to finish, but great signs for the Māori team. Now, Indigenous side have to work their way out of their own 20 from being in such a dominant position early on. Look at this defence. Mato was there, Sherrington there, Gray was in there as well. Solid contact there on power. I'd like to see the Indigenous side just get a second pass in there, just to get on the outside of these big hitters through the middle, give themselves some opportunity to find some spaces. Dodd does some good work out of dummy half, but she's caught after only about a five metre run. They've just about reached the halfway, only a couple of metres short, it is the last. Kelly. Little chip over the top. What's the bounce going to do? Tell you what, it was well read here by the Maori team. And now we're going to go on the front foot again. Already into Indigenous territory. Yuzali Fay with the ball. McGregor to McGregor. Racing to Corbin. Corbin McGregor loses the ball. Knock on, says Belinda Sharp. Well, Joseph, she made up for the error down the previous end of the field with some really good contact here on a really strong runner. I know it was Shania Power. That was great defensive effort. Joseph over the top, forces the error. And now the Indigenous side will get the ball back. Like I said, I want to see them shift it just outside where those big hitters are coming up with really good line speed and putting a lot of pressure on those first ball carriers. I think they'll find a little bit of space outside that third defender. Nine and a half minutes left in this second quarter. If you're just tuning in, four 15-minute quarters. Here's Chapman, bit of room to move. Turner and Parker read it well, though. Indigenous All-Stars team need to work their way back in the contest. You know, we were saying about 
using the football a bit, creating a bit of width, but it's so hard to do, isn't it, in these conditions? It really is, but we've seen some wonderful ball handling from both sides. We've seen very few errors, so I think the skill set that these girls have, they can do it, and it makes for an exciting exciting game to watch, but the defence from the Māori team is just on point at the moment. Sure is. Everyone doing their job. Here's Kelly. On the left. Looking for open spaces. That is a very good kick. Then, oh, a little juggle there from Zali Faye, but she managed to control it. Here's Corbin McGregor. And it was a good chase by the kicker, Kelly, as well. She came up with the tackle on Zali Fay, And it's, she's very dangerous. If you give Zali any space, she will break through it. As Bete Welsh again finds, finds her front, well, should get a quick play of the ball and probably a penalty out of that. But now the Māori still on the burst through the middle. It's just been relentless for the opening 22 minutes of this game. Eight minutes left in the second quarter. And on the march they are through Hill Moana into Indigenous Territory. Maynard to dummy half. Here's the last. What will we see here from oh. Zahara Tamara? Kick downfield. And Chapman takes it well. It's a good chase. Not too many gaps there. It beats one. Beats another. Beats another. Take a bow, Jamie Chapman. And the penalty and the now. Penalty. This young girl, she is with the Dragons program in NRLW. She plays for the Sharks in Harvey Norman's women. Look at this skill. Look at the rain teaming down. She didn't take her eyes off the ball. She knew she needed to get outside those big boppers. She puts on the footwork. She puts on a fence. She puts on a spin. She pushes away from a much bigger body in Cherrington and gets hammered and gets a penalty for the troubles and helps get her team out of trouble. And let's hope that she's okay because receiving attention at the moment might just be tired. Well, I Straight. hope she's all right, because I want to see more of that. That's for sure. Don't run at home well as well. Australian schoolgirl school rugby representative as well, is Jamie Chapman. I think she's also just moved to Queensland recently over the off-season, so she might be taking play, uh, playing in a Q Cup up there. Two terrific competitions, one in each state. Competition in Queensland getting underway soon as well. Here's a big opportunity. Still two tackles left in the set here for the Indigenous team. Bents. Was bent back in that tackle. No harm done though. Kelly. Just hesitated at the kick, and that is a superb pickup, is it? Was there a little juggle there? There was a little mm. juggle. She thought she was in the slips. I thought it was a good pickup as well, but unfortunately for the Maori side, there seems to be a little bit of a bubble. The kick looked like it came just came off the inside of the boot. There wasn't exactly where Akira Kelly wanted it to go. Oh, yeah, good yep. pickup, Belinda. That's why she's the ref, and we're not salty. We'll just blame the angle, <laughs> that bad angle there. But now the Indigenous side will get an excellent opportunity. They get, they've got a scrum set here, so a set piece play. They can try and manoeuvre the Maori side around, create a little bit of opportunity. Well, here we go. Five minutes left in the half. Fua Maono with a run. Mato with the tackle. Todd to dummy half. Oh, and they didn't need that. And tackle two. And a mistake in the last couple of times. The Indigenous team has had opportunities down the opposition end of the football of the, of the field. They've come up with an error early in the tackle count. That is disappointing. And I think she's only just on the field as well, Barker. So that uh, she won't be happy with herself there. But now has the opportunity to really muscle up in defence. But with Hill Moana offloading like that, that is very, very difficult to do. But Dodd just riding the ship there for the Indigenous side. Sort of halfway with Gray, nice offload. We've got to watch out here. Nicholson is fast. Quick player in and around the ruck, fresh legs as well in these conditions. Here's Corbin McGregor. Room to move for Corbin, gets a pass away but couldn't find Zali Faye. It goes in the touch and a let off there for the Indigenous team. 
It's a big let off and Zali will be so disappointed that she's overrun this one here. It was a great little in and away that Corbin McGregor came up with on, against her own opposition. Got a two on one. Look at this beautiful footwork by, by her. She draws into Lena, gets her on her and then unfortunately Zali just missed her assignment. Overran it. She'll be disappointed but again has the opportunity here for the Indigenous side. No points in this second quarter. Don't forget, coming up after this game, we've got the men's All-Stars. You see Benji Marshall in action with his brother, Jeremy Marshall King. He's a uh, knock on both ways. Two terrific games to kick off the Rugby League year 2021 here on nine. We're starting to see a few little errors creep into the game now. Partly conditions, but partly some fatigue setting in. This is the first game of the year for most of these players out here. Even though they are playing quarters, it is still quite taxing. And again, playing in a side where you've just come together for the week, which can be a little bit difficult when if communication goes out the window. But uh, the Māori side now find themselves in some excellent field position here to put on an attacking raid and potentially more points. Sahara Tamara gets a pass away. Vete Wells, Turner now with room to move. Turner, she gets a pass away. Great tackle. Play on too, because they can take the quick tackles outside the 10 and going for the line, reaching out and scoring is Shanice Parker. Parker with the try off the back of the penalty. And the Maori side go further in front. Well, again, you see what errors do to you. Errors put pressure on your side. And now the Maori side just make you pay for it. Shanice Parker, who came up or got the penalty given to her after this, it may have been a little bit high. I'm not too sure there. But again, allowed to play the ball because it's outside the 10 metres and just shows why she is so strong. Shanice Parker played in the All-Stars many, many moons ago with us. And then she went to over to Rugby Sevens, had a stint in Rugby Sevens, and has come back to Rugby League. And I tell you what, I am so glad she is back because she is such a talented player. Very good player, Shanice Parker. To you, Alana. I think the biggest difference between the two sides at the moment, Salty, from down here is just the speed at which the Māori girls are actually playing the footy and then getting their next attacking opportunity and off the back of that we saw Shanice Parker just make the most of that short side opportunity I love it when she backs herself she's such an exciting player a really great football player so great vision from her there but certainly the indigenous women need to try and slow them down because that's when they're at their most dangerous when they have those quick play the balls and the ball players have the footy in their hand and just so many opportunities to take on it's a good point you make Alana she just could have sat back there and so I've all got the penalty, but saw the opportunity, took the tap and... Well, that's great game try. knowledge, isn't it? Mm. Great knowledge, great understanding of where she is and what her opportunities are in that position. Two from two so far for Zahara Tamara. This one, her toughest assignment of the game. Strikes it OK, but the radar is offline. So 16 points to nil. The Maori team in front. Parker showing her strength and agility to score the Maori team's third try in very wet conditions. The rain has just been relentless right throughout the two quarters so far. We're just about at half time. 29 seconds remaining. Here's a short kick, and they're going to regather. Oh, it was like a pinball machine. Will the Maori team have it? 15 seconds left. I didn't think they'd try too much here. Here's Mato. Might have an opportunity for one more play, will we? And we do. Nicholson goes to Gray. Hill Moana. And Nicholson. Here's the siren. Kicking the touch. And that is half time. What a performance we're seeing from the Maori side. After the two 15 minute quarters, they are dominating this clash, leading 16 points to nil. 
The outstanding display from just about everyone in the Maori jersey. They've had some opportunities, the Indigenous team, but have failed to register a point. We know they've got plenty of points in them, though. Trailing at the break by the three tries, 16 points to nil. Fortunately, some of the players being helped from the fields. Which is something you certainly don't want to see. Just so you know, there's a little bit longer for half time. The medical experts determined that the humidity was a little bit intense up in Townsville. That's no surprise. You've played there. I have. And fortunately for me, it was only in June. So it was a little <laughs> bit cooler. It was only 28 degrees. So oh, I can only imagine just cool. how hot it is. I've played in Darwin this time of year and it is really stifling. It's very difficult to get some oxygen into those lungs. OK, so, so smart. good for the girls to get a little bit of extra time. Mm -hmm. OK, now let's chat with the new NRL CEO. He was acting last year. This is Andrew Abdo. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. First of all, congratulations on what is your first official year in the role. Oh, thanks, Saren. Um, uh, yes, it's. I'm a pretty excitable, passionate person, and this is the favorite, my favourite time of the year. I mean, the footy's back. We're going to have uh, some live interval action tonight. Uh, this is an unbelievably impressive stadium, and this week is just so important to us. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. Andrew, you've spoken about just how exciting this game is tonight. It is wonderful to see both of these cultures on display. Will we see more of the Pacific Islander-style test matches? Because, again, they, like this game, are just absolute clangers. They're so good. Well, as I said earlier, like, one of my favourite moments, you know, sport sort of kind of can give you goosebumps. And the pre-match for the All-Stars match is one of those moments when you see what it means, when you see the blending of our cultures, the Maori culture, and of course, the Indigenous war cry. It's a really special moment. Um, Ruin, we absolutely will see more international football. We'll see more. Um, we've seen the emergence of Tonga. We've seen how competitive they are. Um, you know, we have a Rugby League World Cup scheduled for 2021 at the end of the season in the UK. If that doesn't happen because of COVID, we'll be thinking of other ways in which we can see more international football happening on our own shores. Andrew, you got the job. One of the reasons was how well you handled what was an unfathomable situation last year during COVID. What are you most proud of so far in your relatively short career as CEO? Well, uh, first of all, last, last year was a team effort. Like, rugby league is a team sport, and um, it might sound corny, but it's really true. Uh, it was an unbelievable team effort, a lot of sacrifice and a lot of communication. Um, how lucky are we in terms of living in Australia and how well the government has done and the public have responded to this pandemic? And in rugby league, it was really important for us to get back on the field, to get back on the field first, to do it safely. So to answer your question, what am I most proud about? I just think, um, you know, sport brings people together. And in a crisis, people's true colours come out. And what we saw in 2020 is rugby league's true colours. A spirit of unity, cooperation, communication, and some unbelievable innovation. You know, Channel 9 did a terrific job with taking the game back to people um, with atmosphere, you know, artificial crowd noises. And we've seen that copied around the world. So I probably, you know, um, probably the, pros, the most proud to be part of a team that got back on the field first and brought joy to people's living rooms. And, and ultimately, at the end of the season, we, we brought back crowds and we saw the last State of Origin match being played almost in front of a full house at Suncorp Stadium. So You've, there's yeah. a lot to be proud about. You've just earned another 10 minutes of airtime with that compliment for Channel 9. Well played. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, Andrew, 2020 is a real hats-off moment to your executive and to Project Apollo. You've spoken briefly on expansion with the men's game. With NRLW, will we see the same thought process applied to that? Will we see some expansion with the NRLW this year, either in teams or games? Yeah, Ruin, and you and I have a history of chatting about uh, how important the women's game is, and I haven't forgotten uh, the conversations that we had at the sponsors' conference all those years ago, uh, before we had an NRLW. And uh, so, for everyone listening at home, Ruin has been obviously one of our star players, but equally behind the scenes, making sure that we drive um, the development of the female elite pathway, you know, as quickly as we can, but in a sustainable fashion. I mean, the answer to to your question is absolutely. But it's important that when we grow and we grow the women's game, we grow from from the bottom to the top and we do it sustainably. We need 
we need, we need more girls and more women playing the game at all ages and we need to make sure that we're developing it sustainably because we need obviously talent at the highest level comes from a broad participation base. So yes, we want to see more NRLW teams and an expanded competition, more state of origin games, but we also want to see um, you know, growth in the Harvey, Harvey Norman State Cup competitions. We want to see growth in the underage and the development academies, and then ultimately um, right down to grassroots level. And we are looking at all of that. It's a priority of the commission, and it's one of the areas that we're really going to be focusing on in the next couple of years. Now, Andrew, a follow-up question before the girls start. We've seen the game grow so beautifully. We've seen the development ground level. Have you been impressed with the skill sets at the top level which have come through all of this grassroots development? Yeah, um, the short answer to that is, is absolutely. I mean, rugby league uh, produces talent. Um, we, you know, at, at the highest level, the competition is incredible, and that obviously attracts younger people. But we have to work hard. We have to make sure that we stay connected to parents who are making decisions, and we have to make sure it's a great experience. Good coaches, great facilities, using technology, and making sure that we're also connecting with younger people. Um, so we've got to keep our game relevant. OK, Andrew, well, we thank you very much for your time. We've run out of time to ask you about Mick Fuller, the police boss, joining. <laughs> so you're probably happy about that. But thank you so very much, and we look forward to talking to you throughout the year. Erin, you know I always do this. Um, can I just say how special uh, this day is and this whole week has been for us? You know, despite COVID, here we are in Townsville. Um, Harvey Norman All-Stars, it's, it's an absolute celebration. I just want to thank everyone involved in making this happen. The players have been out in the community. Our sponsors, Harvey Norman and Kyrie and others. Um, this is just a terrific way to start the season. So uh, I know uh, I've gone over time, but I really wanted to talk about how important Harvey Norman All-Stars Week is for us, and I can't wait to see the second half of the women's game and, of course, the, the men's game a bit later on. You've absolutely nailed it. Thank you so much, Andrew Abdo. Salty, back to you, just in time. Yes, thank you, Erin. Ready for the side. second half or the third quarter? 15-minute quarters. And the Indigenous team to have first touch of the football in this third quarter. Joseph playing it. Really good to hear from the CEO of the NRL, Andrew Abdo. Here's Talisha Harden. She was hard on herself in the interview at the start of half time there with uh, Alana Ferguson. So they'll look at changing things up in this half. The last two quarters, they need to be next to score. That's an understatement. He's Harden. Kick from Kelly. Vite Wells underneath it. Not a great deal of pressure. She beats the first defender as well to you, Alana. Some very devastating news for the Indigenous women. Talina Simons actually on the sideline from when she collided with Corbin McGregor just before they had that break. So she's, she's in a little bit of pain, actually. I just had a quick chat to her. She's pretty shattered. But that actually means a little bit more for the Indigenous women because she was starting off their sets as we see the Māori women get a penalty here really well. So they're going to have to dig deep here and hopefully find some energy. Someone's going to have to put their hand up and bring the energy that they've just lost in Talina Simon. Yeah, thanks, Alana, for bringing us that. And there is Talina Simon with the ice on the leg. Saw her receiving treatment at the end of the half. That's not good news. Roxy Murdoch with her first run. Made for Warrington over in the UK. Roxette Murdoch. And Nicholson. The Burley Bears on the Gold Coast. And this is Burley teammate Zara Tamara getting a pass away to Amy Turner. Parker, Tamara. Murdoch again. Building nicely. Didn't panic there. Tamara then fires a pass to McGregor. Short ball here to Charrington. That's a good tackle from Phil Mayono. The ball came loose. It was a knock-on. Did very well there, Phil Mayono in defence. 
They needed to stop the Maori side there, the Indigenous team. Just didn't give up, did Fuimaono, making the tackle route. No, that was a beautiful tackle by Fuimaono, but that was a great piece of work through the middle there. As we see Chapman down receiving some treatment there for the Indigenous side. But when that ball bounced through the middle, Zahara Tamara didn't panic. She linked up with her halves partner and then created that gap for Cherrington to just push, just absolutely poured through that gap. And she is such a strong running back rower. And she took a lot of stopping, as you saw, as we see. It looks like she might be getting some treatment or attention to her neck. She might have got caught underneath when Racine McGregor went for that four, for that four pointer just before. There's no half measures with her as we've seen throughout. And it was Donovan who just got her head in underneath him. You'll see it here. The, the, the cheekbone, was it? Donovan felt it too, and that was the hard part of her head, so that must have really hurt Chapman. Some friendly fire. But it looks like she's going to be okay. And it could be an assessment coming. And don't forget, we've got the men's game coming up after... The conclusion of the women's all-stars is Blake Ferguson with assistant coach for the Indigenous team, Justin Hodges. Okay, Just the one there who would have been cracking the joke. I think they were both having a laugh. Cody Walker, proud moment for him tonight. I reckon it would have been Fergo cracking the joke for sure. <laughs> Indigenous women's team now with the ball. Need to complete this set. Maybe throw a portion of the wind a little bit here too. It's been tough metres right throughout the evening. Coming off their own line, the Indigenous team. Hard and bang, what a tackle. Good hit. Bill Moana. Now Joseph. see a replay of that contact, Hilmarina. So we see an error there by the Indigenous side. That is unfortunate. They just got themselves over the halfway line and, and bobbled the ball there for Umayona, who's had a pretty good start to the game. She's come up with some good defensive plays, just had a bit of a look at who was coming up at her from the inside there and just lost the ball. And now the, the Māori team get themselves 45 metres out. We know how hard running their forward pack is as we see evidence of that through Charrington just pushing up through the middle, creating a lot of problems for the Indigenous side. Having a wow of a game is Sherrington. Peters back on after having a bit of a rest. Stand up, to Penate. Playing it to Nicholson. Sahara Tamara with the wraparound. Now Turner. Back to Tamara. This is good ball movement in the wet conditions. Hill Moana now standing in the tackle of Barker. He did well in the end. Is Peters going short? And that was well read in defence. What about the ball being thrown there too? It was a bit of a hospital pass. Oh, look, it was a good defensive read, but I think if Ronna Peters had looked up, they only had four Indigenous defenders covering 60 metres or from halfway to the sideline there. If they just shifted that ball, their centre and winger were free on that far side. We've seen them shift the ball beautifully, but unfortunately there, just that pass didn't go to hand. Keeps the Indigenous team in the contest. They love a penalty here or a line break. Need to create something. Here's someone who can in Chapman. It's the ball away. Sixteen points to nil. Points at a premium in the wet conditions. Bent plays it. He's dodged off. Oh, another strong hit. Is that Hill Moana again? It was. He's everywhere, the youngster. And just backing it up again. We're seeing this contact there, Hill Moana on Dodd. It was beautifully timed, but then she came up with an even better one from Caitlin Phillips. That was a good kick on the back of that by Akira Kelly. The Indigenous pack didn't get too much go for it, but she really has given them a good opportunity here off the back of a great boot. 
Are you enjoying seeing those hits in the safety of the commentary box? Yes, very right? much so. Very much so. Parker playing it, being lively. Here's Turner. Amy Turner scored a try in the first half. Roxy Murdoch. Tackled there by Phillips. Halfway through this set here for the Maori side. McGregor to Peters, now to Vete Welsh. Quick hands. Great skill. And a penalty on the last as well. That is a good old-fashioned coach killer right there. <laughs> on the last tackle, it was a good little play through the middle. I mean, they didn't quite, it didn't come off the way they wanted to, but they got the second best thing. They got a penalty off the back of it. They get another six tackles, 20 metres out from their own line, with big running forwards like Hill Moana, just creating space after space after space. Well, take some stopping here. The pressure has been relentless and a forward pass from McGregor to McGregor. Race Eden reckons it was flat. What do you think, Salty? Mm. It looked flat to you. Will we get a replay here, do you think? Here we go. No. Come on, you've got to call I it. I sort of had a go before the replay. Nah, it was forward. That was forward. <laughs> After we that saw it for forward. the second time. <laughs> Took the soft ops from there. <laughs> All right, next 50-50 call, I'll back this up. All right. <laughs> Expect to be placed under that much pressure in mid-February. Here's another error. And that wasn't 50-50. That was a clear mistake. Good defensive pressure from Sahara Tamara. Well, this girl can do everything for the first game of the year. Not only is she being great touch with the ball in hand, great touch with her kicks, but defensively she's been leading, leading the line speed and showing some really good starch up front, getting her body right in front, getting good front contact, forcing the error there. And again, I feel like I'm a broken record. The Māori side find themselves in excellent attacking position. Now, can they have the patience to pull it off at the end, though, because they just kind of push that last pass in the last set. Nickers it goes to Vete Wells. Now McGregor to McGregor again. Out wide they go. And is that another McGregor? I it think is. it might be. Paige McGregor. Three McGregors and a try. <laughs> Paige McGregor scores the fourth try of the afternoon or the evening for the Maori side. You thought you were seeing triple then. You thought Zahara was doing you dirty in the first half by having her hair out, in, out, in. But now McGregor to McGregor to McGregor. And this, again, shows the value of holding on to the ball, when you, especially when you're coming out of trouble. They tried to come up with this play earlier, and they just mistimed it when Corbin McGregor ran through a little bit too early for Racine. But this was a beautiful finish. And Paige McGregor, free and clear to the try line. What a great finish for the young one. Yeah, hasn't been on the field all that long either. And a very well-worked try. First game in the All-Stars for Paige McGregor. Another player that has a rugby background, but now in league, young Paige. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful that we can get these talented players coming across from rugby union into rugby league. So they bring a lot to the game. We saw especially Elia Green was fantastic for the NRLW. Charlotte Kaslick was fantastic as well. And these are big name players in their own sport to come across and provide such great entertainment in the NRLW. I think it's wonderful. And Amy Turner here today as well has been fantastic. Certainly has. One thing from the Maori side, we talk about Zahara Tamara, who's been very good and a number of the other experienced players, but one of the youngsters have really stood up in this game. Another tough one here for Zahara Tamara. Strikes it well, coming around. Has it got the legs? No. No goal. 20 points to nil, it remains. Tiwalana. 
I was really looking forward to seeing how Zahara Tamara would handle tonight's game because I really wanted to see those leadership skills from her. But this tackle and different elements of her game have just proved that she's willing to put her hand up and show her teammates exactly what and how to do it. That led to the try, but this moment was key. She's had an exceptional game and the execution off the back of it on that, on that play was beautiful. But Zahara Tamara, I've got to put my hands together. She's playing a really great leadership role out there tonight. Certainly is. So 20 points to nil. Four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. So Marua, very strong in her first kick on the field. Oh, there's a mistake. A rare one from the Maori side coming out of their own end. They made a few on the attack. Now Phillips, Caitlin Phillips from Orange, laying a platform. What can they do here? Kelly goes short. It's well read by the defenders. Bent plays it. Now Kelly again into the line. Goes to Caitlin Johnson. Good tackle. Sahara Tamara. Now Dodd. That's the napping. Sikane made the tackle on Dodd. Now Phil Maono goes short. More good defence. That's Corbin McGregor. Outstanding. Long pass. There's no way through. You sell not pass as the Maori defenders doing a great job. What a spectacular tackle that was. She swung around it. Just did a full 360 in the air. That was incredible athleticism. Stopped Paige. her in her tracks. Paige McGregor, wasn't oh, it? That was wonderful. And for the Indigenous side, unfortunately, didn't come up with points at the end of it. But that was a much better worked set. Here we're going to see a replay of this tackle. Oh, good shutdown by the young woman. Don't forget quarters tonight. So three minutes left in this the third quarter. Four 15-minute quarters. Peters. One of Peters. This has been sharp out of dummy half for the Maori side since coming on. Here's Tamarua. Here's the last. Nicholson goes to Zahara Tamara. That's a very good kick, but she was just standing just outside the 40. That was so close. Alana, how did it look to you? Because it looked so close here, but she was just outside. I tell you what, I'm going to blame the rain here because it's Umbrella oh. Central, and I don't have a great vision of the sideline itself, but let's have a look at the replay. Just oh. put her foot down, she, a metre yeah, over. Just down. Close, though, what a great kicker she is. But I do want to touch on the Indigenous women's attack when they were attacking the line before. It looked much more dangerous. I think they went a little bit back to instinctive footy rather than those set plays which weren't necessarily working for them. So I'm looking at Akira Kelly. She's got a brilliant natural footy game. If she just plays eyes up footy a little bit more, has players either side of her as options, they're very dangerous, especially once they do make it over that halfway mark. Dummy half, oh, another mistake from the Indigenous team. And they've made a few coming out of their own ends. Oh, well, look, they've got a minute 15 to hold on until they can have a break and Dean Witters can get back out there. Because at the moment, they've only conceded one try in this quarter. 20 points is a big lead. They do not want to be letting the Māori team get any more points than that because it is going to be a tough challenge as it is. And those kinds of errors coming out of trouble are really going to hurt their chances. Again, I agree. I think Akira Kelly has had some good touches tonight for the Indigenous side. And that last set that they did play through looked a lot more dangerous. Sahara Tamara to Vite Welsh. Here's Turner. They're backing away. Denise Parker. Tackle there by Quinlan. Now Vete Welsh. Sahara Tamara. Tipanay. Nicholson and Sharp out of dummy half. Goes to Peters. They're knocking on the door again here. 
Racine McGregor to Paige McGregor. And this time she stops. Good defence from Stanley. Now McGregor for the line. Didn't she get it down? I think she did. I Racine she McGregor. Have. And Belinda Sharp points to the spot. Set up a few tonight as Racine McGregor and now scores her second try of the night. Oh, Racine, that's wonderful. We've been talking about how wonderful Zahara Tamara has been. But Racine has just been toiling away, been pairing up with her beautifully and creating opportunities. And like this, out of dummy half, just saw that the Indigenous side was sitting back on the try line, weren't pushing up. So a bit of a gap between Donovan and, the, and that second marker and just pushed her nose through. She wanted that try. The second for the night. Paige McGregor came close last time, but again, look, all three McGregors within a five metre radius. I'm looking over at David Middleton and he's saying it's the first time in the history of the game that's happened. Well, he's not, but... <laughs> he just looked at you and said, did I? I very much doubt that it would have, <laughs> it would have happened. Well, three. that aren't related. Yes, anyway, that aren't related, yes. That's probably a good one. It's a mcgregor -a -thon. That right side of attack for the Maori All-Stars team. And after this kick, it will be three-quarter time. No easy ones tonight for Zahara Tamara. Just the first one. First one was from Just the front, the first one. That was Racine as well. Try number one. Well, the radar was working the last kick from this spot, but didn't have the legs. Let's see what happens this time. Struck it okay. And across the face. No goal. So it is three-quarter time in the women's All-Stars clash. And Maori dominating. They lead 24 points to nil. The end of the three-quarter time break in the women's all-stars game and the indigenous team with a mountain of work in front of them trailing 24 points to nil heading into the last 15 minutes the all-stars heading to townsville for the first time this is the first of our double header tonight the men's game coming up very soon Keep saying it's just great to have the rugby league back for 2021. It will be the Indigenous team to receive the ball. The Mary team to kick off, dominating the contest. Ready for kickoff for the third. Fourth quarter. Stay on side. We see a miracle come back. Got to create something straight away here. The Indigenous team. There's been glimpses, Rue, but just hasn't been consistent enough. No, again, just that ball security has let them down. But they haven't given up, which is wonderful signs. I just don't think that they can get 24 points in 15 minutes of footy the way the Māori side has been defending through the middle, has been so strong as we see a good charge here by their captain, Talisha Harden, finds her front, hoping for a quick play the ball. Halfway through the set. Into opposition territory go the Indigenous team. And now Bent beating a tackler. And now into broken play. That's a good run from Shaley Bent. Two tackles left in the set. Power to dummy half. Kelly, long pass. Now for Maono, nine away. Phillips goes to dummy half. It's the last. Kelly, dummy, rubber kick, ricochets, bounce goes backwards, and now the Maori team survive. Could have gone anywhere. Nicholson dived on it though. Well, that was a beautifully worked set as we see Vete Walsh just making some good meters out of trouble here for the Māori team. But down this right side, we saw some great broken play running there by Shaylee Bet. We see just how dangerous she can be with the ball in hand. That was a good set by the Indigenous side. I think Akira would want that time back again. But you see the strength of her pushing away from there and just shoving away down the field. 
and some good defence, as we can see in the small panel now. Good defence in the middle by the Indigenous side. Here's Peters. Couple there by Phillips and Harden. That's a good hit, Caitlin Johnston. Teammate there, Roos's teammate back on the field, just made her know that she was there. Kick downfield. Oh, beautiful bounce here for Parker. Now, has that gone backwards? No, it's play on for Turner, looking for her second try. Good be a changeover. Scramble. Good scramble by the Indigenous side because Amy Turner looked like she was in for all money. And the Indigenous side just came swarming in and shut that down. That was a real danger play there. Good stuff by the Indigenous team. Don't forget to the new rules that we've seen in this game. And, of course, we'll see them later on in the men's game as well. But when the kick goes into touch, it will be a tap, not a scrum. to speed the game up even more. Oh, an entertaining contest. That's a good run. And a penalty as well for the Indigenous team. Well, there you go. We've got the full explanation there. Went for a second go at the ball. Akira Kelly will be looking to put a fair few metres on here to give her forwards a bit of a break. And the Indigenous side, we saw in their last attacking raid just how fantastic it was. How much ground they made. Can they do it again and come up with some points at the back end? Well, I'll start a set. On a rare occasion tonight around the halfway line. And Talisha Harden will be tackled on the halfway. Phillips, the dummy half dog. Caitlin Johnson's had a little bow peep there. Just looked up and dropped the ball. It has been the story of the night, hasn't it? It certainly has been. And now the, the Māori team find themselves in a position where they can pile on some more points, potentially. And Caitlin will be very disappointed with that. She's one of their senior players. Even though she's only 20 years old, she's been around for a long time. She's a very, very talented player. As we can see, the coaching staff up there just ruling a few opportunities that have gone by the wayside today. And, you know, we've spoken about it is torrid conditions. However, on the whole, ball handling has been quite good. We've seen plenty of plays like this. Corbin McGregor with a dummy. Still going. He does well not to be dragged over the sideline. There's plenty of strength there to get her boots into the ground so she couldn't be thrown over the sideline. That's where she was heading is Charrington. Maynard. Tipanay. And loses the football. Oh, trying to offload in traffic in this weather. We're getting a we captain's, captain's challenge. challenge. New Zealand Maori are disputing this decision of knock on. Come on, 50-50. Uh, I'll say knock on because it touched an Indigenous player. Oh, that's good because I wasn't watching. I was looking at you. <laughs> oh, <there> you <laughs> I think as it came free, I'm sure it touched an Indigenous player. This is where we'll have a good look at it. So, juggle, juggle, and then, yeah, it's touched, it, touched an arm there of one of the defenders. Oh, it was worth a throw. They're ahead by 24 points. There's only 10 minutes left in the game. Not a huge risk. Not a great, not a huge risk, no. Unless will they rule that? No, I think it's a loose carry anyway. So I think Belinda Sharp has come up with the right call. She's she's had some really good it's calls. Challenge from the Indigenous team. No intent to strip the ball. Challenge unsuccessful. Challenge is unsuccessful. No more challenges. So there you go. Challenge unsuccessful. Um, where's the scrum? Just came free as Belinda Sharp saw it, and then they might have gone, gone backwards as well. As soon as it touches an opposition touch player, it. yep. it's out of play, isn't it? That's so right. Okay. Good call by Belinda. There's no strip in there either. Entering the last 10 minutes of the contest. I'll tell you one thing, Rube, that we've seen tonight. Glimpses of the young, talented players on display. Players that 
haven't had a taste of NRLW against experienced opponents. They've handled themselves really well. Here's a kick from inside their own 20. And it's going to go into touch. But it's a 2050, so they're going to get the ball back here. And this is one of the young, talented players that we've just been talking about. Akira Kelly, in a side that has is down 24-0, has been very strong for them. This is good vision by the young half. And Chapman pushing up with her outside backs, really putting pressure on the Māori team. And Kelly, great decision, great vision, and good execution. The game's been outstanding right throughout the game. Yep. Well done from the young half. Here's to Lisa Harden. Ball of release and then went on with it. Here's a quick tap here from Talisha Harden. Good run from her. 20 away from the line. Indigenous team will be desperate just to score some points. And you see them willing to chance their arm a little bit more. They're shifting that ball a little bit wider, finding some space outside that third and fourth defender. Phillips playing it. Here's Akira Kelly. Rattle there. Strong defence. Tasman Gray. Phillips the dummy half. Harden with a dummy. Dances with them. Nowhere to go for her. And it's the last tackle. Phillips. Phil Mayono. Oh, great take. Racing McGregor. Doing very well. well. She's another player who has been very good today, as we see. There could be an issue here for Racine. During NRLW, we saw her go down a couple of times with some neck slash sh uh, shoulder issues. So hopefully this isn't a reoccurrence of that. Looks like she just got some pressure in an awkward position there. So we hope she's OK. We'll see this on replay. It was a great take. Look at that. Turned with it. Took the heat off the ball. Tried to find the ground. I think she's got manhandled and wrestled a little bit there. Awkward, awkward position there by Caitlin Johnson. So receiving attention now, going through all the precautions of the trainers with Racine McGregor. Down to you, Alana. I just wanted to talk about the Indigenous women and that attacking set. I thought it highlighted a little bit of their inexperience, just having that great field possession but not being able to capitalise on it. But I'm really excited as we see Racine McGregor leave the field. The, the crowd's going wild. It's a, an incredible atmosphere down here. But I'm really excited to see how Akira Kelly and Jamie Chapman, they're two very, very exciting, talented football players. I can't wait to see them evolve during this game. And just if they go back and they re-watch that set, they'll see the combinations and where they could have linked up and the opportunities that they could have possibly turned into points in those in those in in that scenario. But they're, they're, we've got so much talent out there on the field today. The Indigenous women in particular don't have a lot of experience in some of those key uh, ball-playing roles, but, gee, it's exciting looking at the future of our game and watching them out there today. Well, it sure is. Many of them get to taste NRLW. But showing Rue the depth coming through, the talented youngsters that are coming through in the women's game. Yeah, we spoke to Andrew Abdo just after half-time about the talent and the development of the women's game, and we are seeing that come to fruition now. I remember last year going and watching a game where there were girls playing opens football that have been playing since under sixes, and that, to me, just shows how far our game has come. Certainly has come a long way. Here's Parker. Loose carry from her. Kelly's got it. It'll be play on here. Chapman. See her in open spaces again. Okay, stand up now. Wait, wait. Marto making the tackle there. And young Jamie Chapman. Quinlan. Inside their own 30 now. Seven minutes left. In the contest, here's Harden. 
hasn't stopped trying to lift her team. The Indigenous captain, Talisha Harden. For my own note. We've only really seen her do a lot of defence, but she has been very willing in every time she gets the ball in hand. Again, Akira Kelly with a great kick. A great kick, finds the grass, and now the kick chase here is so important for the Indigenous side. They need to shut Parker down because she is danger when she gets into open field. Quincy, good job on her there. Stopped on her own 20. It's Paige McGregor. Hasn't she been impressive since she's come on the field? Coming in, doing a fair bit of work. Mm, getting a try. And a try saving and tackle a, as well. Being involved in another couple of tries. Maynard. And here's Mato. It's a strong run. I think she's come on. Oh no, Hilmawan is out there as well. So they've got a couple of big running front rowers out there. Zara Tamara wrapped up there. Took her up a little bit too, that tackle. It's a kick from Gray. It's all knocked backwards there, but work to do, and well, Donovan, Donovan did well. Well done. Oh, and we see him just tee off now. Look at that. Hill Moana. Oh, I thought she was about to run over them before, but now she's just come up with an absolute bell ringer. This is relentless. Oh, I'm so glad you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> just quietly. Less than five minutes left in the contest. You're up by 24. And check out this defence from the Maori team. And Donovan did well to get the field of play. And here's a, here's a penalty. Late in the set. Just a couple of opportunities remaining for the Indigenous team to register some points. I've been so impressed with Hilmoana. Coming off the bench, I think she has provided a lot of go forward, a lot of spark and opportunity, and a lot of energy, which is what you want your bench players doing. She's really brought that tonight for the Indigenous side. Yeah, she certainly has. with any young players that we're looking forward to seeing how far she'll go, Hill Moana. Dodd goes to Fermaono and here's Harden. It's still the defence relentless. Good tackle there from Zahara Tamara. Here's a kick in behind. And they're going to get the ball here through Stanley. Still a couple of tackles left in the set. Big opportunity this one for the Indigenous team. There's Peters now. Playing it on the last. Kick there from Dodd. And they're going to get the ball here. The Maori side through Cherrington. Well, what an exciting piece of play down that right edge. Again, Akira Kelly, just her game knowledge has really come to play. We see some great defence there by the Indigenous side, but really creating opportunities out of nothing and great communication to get her outside backs pushing up with her to create that. Got one here, Corbin McGregor. Here's that kick I'm talking about. Akira Kelly knew that she wanted her outside backs pushing up. And that's Stanley. That's a great effort in these conditions. It's Corbin McGregor. Looks like she's in a bit of trouble there in the small inset. Oh, there you go. Head clash with Talisha Harden. Oh, yeah. So, so Corbin McGregor is getting some attention. Going through the on-field HIA test. Or oh, you can see it come up on that left eye already. That's going to leave a mark. Sure will. Talisha looks okay, which is good. But Corb McGregor, again, has been captain, has been very impressive this afternoon or this evening for the Indigenous side. Oh, yeah, you can just see that clash. That left eye has just popped up straight away for Corbin McGregor. Oh. Oh. 
Uh, she's walked off the field under her own steam, so that is a very positive sign. She'll get checked out for an HIA, ensure that there's no residual effects. Here's a kick from inside the 40, but angled back towards the centre of the ground from Sahara Tamara. Now Chapman, Jamie Chapman. One fullback, being one of the shining lights for the Indigenous All-Stars team. As we enter the last two minutes of the contest. Power, a strong defence. Play the ball though. Oh, Marto. Into Donovan. Did well though, the centre got straight up. And the ball goes to ground. Should be a knock on. Jesus has been a physical contest. First game of the year. And they are not shy about getting into it, are they? This is some great footy. Unfortunately, the ball goes to ground here, but Shannon Martel. Oh, we saw her do this a lot. We saw her do this a lot last year in NRLW, coming up with another great shot. Just picking up where Hilmawana left off, really. Terrific defence in the wet conditions. Last minute of play. The first of our two All-Stars games this evening. For my own own. Tackled for the Indigenous team. And some terrific football on display right throughout the contest. The Indigenous side. Nothing to show for their efforts this afternoon. The defence, this evening the defence has been terrific. Right throughout, even when they've had the contest well in hand. Dodd, long pass, it'll be intercepted by Paige McGregor. Only yeah. got one McGregor out there now. Five seconds left. Fete Wells has been very good. This evening as well, tackled, and that will be full time. And the Maori team celebrates. They have won this contest by 24 points to nil. An outstanding display from Corbin McGregor, who led the team to victory this evening over a Indigenous team that didn't stop trying. No, they certainly did it. The Indigenous side were trying all the way to that final whistle, but it was just a phenomenal effort by the Māori team. They dominated the middle. Their halves really took control. They scored points almost at will, and even though they made a few errors defensively, they really stood up to the task. They certainly did. 24 points to nil, the full-time score in the Women's All-Stars. Such an incredible match to kick off the 2021 NRL season. The Maori girls far too strong for their Indigenous counterparts. And they were certainly super happy about them. So they should be. 24 to nil. OK, Zach Bailey now with the presentation. our official party on a stage tonight. National Rugby League Chief Executive Officer Andrew Abdo, the Chair of the Australian Rugby League Indigenous Council Katrina Fanning and Women's Rugby League Trailblazer Karen Murphy. It's now, it's now time to acknowledge the player of the match who will receive the Trish Hina medal from her coach Keith Hanley. And after scoring two tries today, the winner from the Moldy All-Stars, Racine McGregor.
just like to say thank you to Harvey Norman for hosting this amazing event. Uh, to the Indigenous girls, you should be really proud of yourselves. You did an awesome job out there. To my girls, so proud of you guys. We did it, not just for us, but for everyone back home. To our coaching staff, thank you to you guys too. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you. Congratulations again, Racine. I'd now like to invite to the stage the, cap uh, the captain of the runners-up, the Indigenous All-Stars, after her sixth All-Stars match. Please welcome Talisha Harden. Um, just firstly, I just want to say um, thank you so much to Harvey Norman, to Kari, to the NRL for, for having us up here. Um, I know on behalf of the girls, myself and the, and the Maldives, that we really, really appreciate it. Um, to all our families who travelled near, far and wide, thank you so much. Thanks for the local support. Uh, to the Maldi girls, congratulations, a well-deserved win. Um, you guys are absolutely awesome. It's a credit to you, your families and your coaching staff. And to our girls, we'll, we'll learn from this. You know, I'm so proud of all of you. Be proud of that jersey that you're wearing because you did it proud. We learn more from our losses and we'll be back next year. So thank you so much. Thank you, Talisha, and to the Indigenous All-Stars. Well, it's her moment. Please welcome to the stage the captain of the Maldi All-Stars, Corbin McGregor. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we stand today. Uh, I'd like to thank the NRL and Harvey Norman for putting on a great spectacle tonight. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors, Casey, from, Casey Ellis from Ellis Post Tension back in NZ. I also want to acknowledge and thank our New Zealand-based sisters over in NZ. We played for you girls tonight and I hope we did you proud. Uh, I'd like to send my love and thanks to the, our Indigenous sisters. You guys played with so much heart and never gave up. So congratulations on that. Thanks, girls. And to my girls, my Māori sisters, it's been a hell of a week and I've loved every minute of it. Congratulations, girls. We did it. Proud of you. Congratulations, Corbin and the Māori... Trophy. Once again, congratulations to the Mouldy All Stars. And that wraps up our official presentation here, ladies and gentlemen, as we let these incredible players enjoy their victory. Yeah, congratulations to the Maori girls. There's no doubting their dominance at all. They were just on fire this afternoon. And Corbin McGregor, her words were so powerful. Congratulations to her as well. That is not all we have coming up. The men's, of course, is next. And I have a sneaking suspicion it'll be a lot closer than this match if we're looking at the past couple of years' results. You are watching Nine's Wide World of Sports. What a way to kick off footy in 2021.